welcome to the August uh, 2021 board meeting. Uh, Pam had a family commitment, can't be here today, so you're stuck with me as your acting chair. And uh, Michael Klitzing is out of on vacation. He's on vac probably what is a well-deserved vacation. So uh, we're going to move through the agenda, and as we have been doing the last uh, few months, we're going to start with public comment. And I'm going to ask that if we follow the same thing. If you want to make a comment this morning, please come to the center and behind the table and uh, ask a question or tell us what's on your mind. Hi, uh, Jay Winkelbach. Uh, I'm in District 1 uh, on uh, John Green Road. Uh, I had a neighbor said that they had their water tested for blue green algae off their dock area and they said it came back positive right next door to us. Is there any evidence that you folks have gotten that has other areas other than the retention pond? And then I guess there was some here at the uh, yeah. point. Yeah, so we tested that. Um, and there's actually been quite a few calls that we've gotten for some small channels around and some docking areas. And uh, it's been really visible the species that it has, like bright fluorescent green. IU was out this past Tuesday to do a lake-wide sampling. So once we get the results back from that, we'll send an update through constant contact okay. on the lake-wide conditions. So, so that they did find some moving out. Yeah, it was. We got some pictures um, from them. <laughs> I mean, water looked painted. And we've had a couple other ones. So really, if you see anything, you send out a couple different pictures. If you see something that looks out of the ordinary, just avoid the area. Don't let like, kids or dogs play in that area. And then once we have our full spectrum testing from the lake live, we'll send out information on that. What so, was is that in? So I think right now it's about the perfect conditions. We've had a ton of rain, some nutrients get washed into the lake, and then it just, the rain stops, so the lake doesn't flush out. So we have all these nutrients, not much water flow. Um, and the high temperature, so it's like the perfect conditions. Once we start getting some rain, it should flush it out again. Uh, it's just kind of ideal conditions. Also, a lot of wave action will break it up. So that one kind of showed up at the beginning of the week on calm waters, and then by the weekend, it kind of dissipated. So. Okay, but so uh, for the meantime, we should all kind of pretend like maybe we should take precautions, like we do have. Yeah, we would recommend is once you got out of the water, take a shower, try to, to minimal ingestion of the water. Um, the biggest thing is to take a shower when you get out and avoid any spots where you can visually see something out of the ordinary. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Can you swim in the middle of the lake? Is it, if you're away from it, is it okay? Because I usually swim in the middle. Yeah, I mean, the middle is probably the best part to that flow, but it's still present there. I'm sure if you're not in concentration, you wouldn't even see it. We swim, we swim at sundown in the middle of the lake. But we will we'll send out some information once we get that full testing. And are those nutrients artificial nutrients that people put on their lawns, or what are the nutrients? Um, I'm not sure if it's lawns. It's just from the, we have a massive watershed. It's like 80 square miles that washes into it. So it can be manure, it can be lawns, it can just be from the rock. Um, I think it's just that it's had so much rain and then nothing there. Hi. My question is with the Rebecca Ball. Rebecca Ball, District 7. Not project. So my question is um, related to the algae and the warning signs that, that got put up on the overflow lake. Um, and I know it's in the red. Um, when the heat went away, the lake looked more on the east end like it got not too bad at all. Um, this getting better. So that's dawned me. My question is, how often is the overflow lake or the other thing we have signs tested when the sign when the sign is in the hazard level? So for the overflow specifically, we started testing once we started seeing that rust brown collar. Right. That's from the cylindrical for Boston. Mm -hmm. um, so we tested it and we waited a couple of weeks and tested it again. So until we started to see that dissipate, um, we'll test probably five weekly down there. We test five weekly at the lake, and then for the, the full or at the beach, and then for the full lake, I think it's three or four times throughout the year. But if we suspect elevated levels, we'll increase the testing on that. Okay. So did I hear you say that we test bi-weekly? At the beach, we test bi-weekly. Okay. And the pond we test once we start to see the bloom, and then we'll continue testing. And the last time we tested it was at over 800 
thousand cells per milliliter, which is about eight times the sodium threshold. Um, yeah, so we'll leave that up there, and until we start to see, they tested this last time, last Tuesday when we were there. Um, so we'll continue the testing, and then it'll probably stay until we start to see that dissipate there. Okay. But, yeah, I didn't know how often it's tested, and the chain, the sign changed. And where's the sample taken from? In relationship to the two culprits, the big one and the little one. I'd have to ask IU on that one. I'd have to ask. I believe they take them from the causeway there. Um, but it's pretty uniform that bloom throughout that, that entire area right there. And you can see the, this coloration of the body of water. Well, I can see the um, coloration. I guess my question is it, it seems like more toward the east end, where I think it might be deeper. It was not as severe as closer to the west end. So I, that's why I, my question, and along the um, Along the, where the water is to the ground, mm -hmm. those areas too are really bad. So, you know, when you go out further and deeper, is it? Generally, the more volume that you have, it can be a little bit better. Um, that's why I went in and put that sign on the west end, right, where that kind of people could pull in there with canoes and kayaks. This could actually the general public enters the area, right? Now. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm Teresa Simmons, and I'm in District 7 on the uh, Overbrook area as well. And um, I have uh, got a petition going. I don't know if anybody's ever contacted the county. I believe that culvert in 2017 was replaced with the small, the big culvert was there, was replaced with the small one at a much higher elevation. And I don't know if you were here then at the time. I don't know if there's any correspondence with the county and say, hey, this is the wrong size culvert. Why are you doing this? I don't know if you have anything like that. That might help with the petition. But I'm asking them to restore it to its original large size and, uh, and depth. That'd be great. Because uh, last time, last month, there were a lot of people who got up and talked about how their places were flooded and how it wasn't receding fast enough. And on our side of the lake, the water stayed low over there. It stayed low, and you can see the other side, where everybody else is, rising and rising and backing up and backing up more on those properties. Well, it can't get over here. It can't get over there until it reaches way up high to that little bitty culvert, and then it starts to spill it over a little bit of time. So it would relieve the rest of the lake if they could use if that volume could be used and it would get over there faster. And it was also help with the algae. And that was a big mistake that they did. And it, my husband retired from FEMA and he worked for public assistance with replacing culverts. FEMA is not allowed to replace a culvert with a with an inferior. It has to be as good or better. I agree with that in communication. Um, a handful of years ago when they first did that, mm -hmm. I think putting bigger culverts, even if they could put more culverts oh, in there, yeah. would be ideal. So the more that we can increase the area for that makes it better. So yeah. I mean, we definitely fully support that. I think if you lower yeah. that one or put in multiple or larger, okay. I think that would absolutely help. Us. Well, I think the, maybe there's power in numbers and get everybody to sign the petition. Mm -hmm. And then we can add to it if we want, uh, but I just made the comment that would help with the flow of the, the build up of the water of the lake and the well, I, would, I would certainly agree that it would be worth looking at. Yeah. And I, I think the board probably feels the same way. So, okay. You got your petition with you. I do. I have uh, several pages here, so I can just start passing it around to people and sign it. Okay. You know, a while back, didn't we have somebody from the grading board come and speak to us? And we Talked about this. I thought we did. I thought and, we did. and so, you know, and, and actually, not long after that, they put in another culvert, but it was more to the That's west. Right. And it's little. And, and it's small. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so it really tough. wasn't, you know, it was way at the end. And I mm think -hmm. what we were wanting is where it was to start with. Mm -hmm. But that person at least seemed 
uh, receptive to our concerns, if we can figure out who that was and it's still brown, it might be a place. I think it's the Monroe County Highway Department. That's, That's who I addressed to yeah, on So, yeah. but I'm not sure which person. It should go. Do you might be able to help with that? I can. Yeah, yeah. Shoot, shoot me an email, and I'll see who I can find there for contact. So. Well, yeah, we checked the meeting minutes. I mean, that person's name. Yeah, I'll I'll see see it. It. I know they just had a couple transitions with their. It's probably their MS4 coordinate, like they can find sewer overflow stuff. And I know they have a new person there. Um, I'll look that name. I'll give it out. Okay. And then on the sort of related subject, the permit that we put in with the DNR to fill that in. If they fill that in, there's no point in putting a little golf course. I mean, I think that part needs to be dropped off the permit for DNR. I'd like to submit that we remove that portion of the DNR request to fill that in. Because I think we need it for the overflow. We need every bit of volume we can get. My, my question related to that, excuse me, is that if we put multiple of more culverts in to flow back and forth, are we not letting, doesn't that damage the main body of the water more? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we're not the issue. It didn't seem to be well, an issue before the culvert was put in wrong. Well, we really didn't start testing until the past couple of years. In 2008, you weren't even here, that was before me. I think in 2007 or 8, we had a real big bloom that we tested for, and then we started testing. I believe 15 or 16 once we started noticing that coloration. Um, so we didn't have as much data before then. I think there were probably some may not have been to the same level. Right, because um, Rebecca and Brenda have lived here well, a long time. And they noticed a big difference. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it was noticeable. It wasn't before. Yeah, well, like I said, let's, uh, let's take one thing at a time here and let's start with the petition. And try okay, to because petition. we're burning up our money. With lawyers. I know. We need to just drop that part, get over to spending money on lawyers. We've seen what happens. We've seen from the four years what has happened. We've seen from the four years the rising of the lake, backing up on those people. We've seen the algae from these four years. We don't need any more tests. We know. Okay. So I, 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 think we should, I think we should take it off. Well, I'll give the information, at least for the MS4, and we can start there. We will start with that and see where it gets you. So just a quick question. So your petition is, is simply for the caller oh, and not for the issue of... Filling uh, it in? Yeah. Well, that's not anything to do with Monroe County. So the petitions to Monroe County for them to fix the uh, yeah. Okay. But, but this saying, definitely, we want to sign this petition because of the culprit. Well, well the drainage. We do, as long as it doesn't damage the main body of water, and that's what I would like some sort of scientific. And we have to ask. I mean, we need the, to get vegetation there at the <laughs> minimum. So if you only had a couple culverts, I'm not sure it's going to be a huge difference. If we could put, you know, a handful of really large things or culverts, ideally it was something like. 446, we have an open causeway and a wave action. Yeah. There. yeah, yeah no. That would be ideal. So, unless you have the wave action or vegetation to take up the nutrients, it's going to continue to be, you know, it's the perfect condition right now because there's no connectivity and there's no vegetation. All right. so, the federal government did pass an infrastructure bill. I don't know if we can tap into any of that. Get to improve the culvert. Maybe we should push for that. And get the culvert wide and fix it. That's a good point. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, I'll do a quick. Uh, um, I grew up in a lake that uh, had a lot of could be included really often. So as a child, um, every day when I went swimming, I called and got a tape recording of the condition of the water. So I not everybody gets that for email, so it'd be nice if on the voicemail you would say, Hey, the condition of the water is okay. And like and also can you ever test yourself like last summer? There was one day when we closed the beach, we said we have to close it for three days and then it's the weekend, they can't come back until later. Is there someone that we can test to beach ourselves so we can't have, is it good not wait for them to come back? Not for the algae themselves, you have to send off to a lab and specific type of algae. Um, so it's, it's hard to do every day unless you have really good equipment or you know, science is not staffed, I can't identify that. So 
The one reason it wasn't before was for E. coli, and that's because we had three weeks in a row with a high range yeah. of E. coli counts are real hard, real high. So, but we're trying, we're hoping to buy weekly will at least you know, keep us as informed as we can. So if you could inform us on the voicemail, it would be nice. Okay, we're trying to get a new phone system. <laughs> uh, uh, a couple things. First, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, second one is. I was, last month I was looking on the website and everything for the dredging, year to date, and all that stuff. And was just trying to, you know, yeah, keep track of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We had, in 2016, year end, you did from 2006 to 2016, zone, kind of like dredge, all that stuff. I can't find anything 17 to present. Is there any way you can possibly go, you know, 20? Is that six, 316 was on the website? I'm sorry? 316 was on the website? Yeah, you did it. All of those yeah, we have, we can update that. And it's yeah. 2020. Yeah. Uh, so just so everyone knows where we've done, what yeah. we've done, how much, and all that stuff. We, we, have that, was, we have that file and we keep it updated on the computer. Um, we just had not made it to the website. We're good on it. So. Yep. Okay. And then lastly, um, Talking about swimming in the middle of the lake. I didn't think we were supposed to swim in the middle of the lake. I got stopped by a, a cop or a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really encourage people to go to the swimming areas or within the buoys on the lake, um, especially during the weekends when it's like real high traffic. It gets pretty dangerous. He was pretty nice, though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Lewis, District 7, and I was reading your minutes and noticed that. You were discussing for the budget um, a, a, approximately a 71% increase for a one time thing for the Conservancy. I'd like to know what your procedure is. And you said that you were reviewing alternatives and asking three members. I'd like to know what your well, we procedure is going to be on that, uh, what your timelines would be, how it's going to take place. Are the three members going to be able to vote on that? Um, That's a pretty significant increase. Right. We're going to cover that in the budget, but I will tell you that that is not something that our budget committee is recommending at no, all. We are sticking to the 7.5%. Okay. Trying right. to figure out. Get <laughs> yeah, we did not think that was an appropriate thing to do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm Steve. I'm here at District 7. Um, just wanted to see, are you guys doing more debris removal like for the East End? Yeah, there's. I mean, our buoys are getting a narrower lane at times, and there's stuff underwater that we can't see that I, I bet you can sort of think every time we go in or out. Like in the channel there? Uh -huh. Well, just outside the channel and the channel. Maybe yeah, just let us know. We do keep an eye on that. Some of the stuff that's piled up in the middle we can't reach right now at the bar just without the depth. Um, but if we see anything or you let us know there's something right in the channel that we can definitely. Well, I can't see it because I have one better anything, but like our motor bumps up every time. <laughs> no matter <laughs> which spirit we try to go on. Well, we can take a look at it. Yeah, if we know something there. We can do that. There's a few things.
found a new boat, um, and if not, who do we talk to? You know, I've found several that would be great that we're talking five thousand to eight thousand dollars, so half of what you guys are talking. Yeah, we, we purchased a jet ski about two weeks ago, I've been using it for the past two weeks out on the way for Lake Patrol. So we have replaced the Lake Patrol bus. And we we're gonna talk more about that in the agenda, aren't we? I don't believe we are, but uh, I would respond, Todd, to the comment about 15000 when I was talking about the assets and the deferred maintenance and things that we needed to replace and that we had originally on a spreadsheet what the budget committee looked at was a price of we were replacing the patrol boat probably two years down the road. And we had a number in there that had about $15,000 and that now we were looking at needing to make some kind of replacement because it seemed like it certainly everyone agreed that we had to have the patrol out. So you're right, we did purchase for $12,500 of jet ski to patrol. Well, I got a question. Part of the lake patrol is to assist with the responding incident, right? How do you need help? If somebody is injured, are you going to get them back to that ramp to meet an ambulance on a freaking jet ski that you can't hang on to? Well, we got three tow boats. If somebody's injured, we're going to call the fire department or the rescue team. We're not going to get involved. Uh, well, plus, you know, they do. Uh, I looked this up on the internet just before I came, but they do sell like a floating little trailer that you could hook behind it and you know they had pictures of people being uh, um, evacuated and transported that way so i mean there is there is an option well these guys are first responders they're on the way they could be on the scene before maybe township where he is okay but what are you going to do circle around them? I mean, <laughs> yeah mark mark the location we're not first responders <laughs> where you are <laughs> We have a fire department. Actually, the fire department is talking about putting a dock down here too with a, a rescue boat. So we'll these are we'll these are three person. This is a substantial jet ski. A three person yeah. jet ski. It's like you know, get them for no work. And I think personally, my view was that on the recommendation of the manager and Alex that uh, it's it's better because it goes faster. I mean, our control boat couldn't keep up with and couldn't catch. It's also sort of like a deep way to expect Lake Patrol to be on a jet ski. You know, you know, you know, you know. Can we get back to Todd? We're going to go. Okay, well, it's Todd. Let's, let's get back to the person at the podium. Uh, Todd, what else do you have? I guess on that aspect, man, uh, with those now I'm hearing, you know, the big purchase. Yes. Which is 
a violation of our own safe boating rules. Um, you don't approach any boater at a right angle. The person on the right has the right of way. You overcome them from the, from the rear. If you have to, you, you approach them from the front, but you do not approach from the right angle. I, I, I feel that there could be an accident on the water if we don't put these guys through some kind of class. Could we do that? Yeah, I'm not sure who's approaching. Where are you looking at when they're well, you, you, it was you, Ed. Uh, I went to get the <laughs> And you at a high rate of speed approached me on the left, and I looked. My wife was with me. And I got, I got close to you there? Yeah, you got too close to me. And then, and then when you got close enough, I guess, to look at my sticker. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah much, which I could see. I, I waved at you. I waved at you. And then you turned around. Here's another thing, a violation. <laughs> you didn't even look behind you. You just turn. Man, if there was a boat coming, you would have knocked it right off of it. I seen it in the <laughs> hollow. But I, I appreciate the it. The, the second time, I was coming back from the cove, and you came at me again at a right angle, and you didn't, you should have recognized my boat again. But you came at me again, and I'm like, what the hell is this? I thought maybe you bought a jet ski for your personal use. No idea you'd be in a jet ski. How close was that, Jay? How many <laughs> you know, let's look into the training, and we'll get this under control. Very good. Thank you. you can do online training too for ten bucks. Right. Yeah. You know, that's okay. That's a good idea. Okay. That's the. We're going to end public comment now. We have several things to get to on the agenda, and uh, the first order of business is the approval of the July twenty fourth board meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> uh, we did talk about an action items list at that meeting. Which Adam's going to cover in his report. Oh, okay. Very good. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor of approval of the minutes, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Motion carried.
the bond issue, those kind of things that have been mentioned in the past. There are some graphs that were included in the board materials, which I think give a, a big picture of the details that I've already given. Are there any questions or comments on the July financial statements from the board? No, I'm in pre board and then. Okay. All righty. Next, um, I guess I would, I would like to ask for approval of the July claims. So moved. Second. Any questions on those claims? I do have one, but I, I will go ahead and get them approved if I can come back to it. Check number 5403 to Nate Anderson for fire hydrant path clearing, $540, but we can approve them and I can come back to that. What do you want to come back to? Okay. Uh, well, I guess I want to know why the office didn't go clear the area around the hydrant, why we had to hire somebody to do it. Nate does all of our maintenance around here and that brush hogs and tractors. Um, so they can do a lot more substantial job than we can with the clippers. So we hired them out to go clear. This is for the fire hydrant on the spillway road. Yeah, so they brought in the brush hog and cleared out, cleared out the trees on the side and everything. So they did a very nice job down there. So do you want me to bring up now the uh, the pumping in the up plant side, or do you want me to bring that up in the manager's uh, report? You're going to cover, you're going to talk about the settlement project, right? Yeah. Why don't we wait till then? Oh, okay. does it relate to any of the vouchers that we're asking for approval? Well, uh, just one other question. Were there any uh, uh, cash payments that we made this month? Because I understand that, that there may have been a, you, you uh, told the freeholder that you needed cash for a riprap job and you needed to pay the, the riprap driver cash. So when was, was this? A, when was this? This time? was uh, May of 2020. That's not, oh, this is not over a year so. ago. We've already covered oh, all that. Yeah. We've looked at that. We can we, talk about I haven't that. covered it. Yeah, so this is what you brought up to the auditors with, with a concern about me. Um, we take you payment, with your we talk, take, you're talking to a director. We take payment, it, exactly, I am, I'm being respectful. Let's calm down. We take payment in advance for private work. Even at Solomon Harbor, we require a check in advance. For a work. check? This particular person, the railings, wanted to pay for it in advance. Uh, they uh, had cash on hand. That's not true. You had cash on hand no, and no, a check. No. Yes, it was true. No, Adam, uh, you told we me I had to have cash. My husband had to drive with me to get half of it in cash. The other half, the other half of that was in a check, and yes, the receipt that we sent was for a check and cash. cash. I did. Can I just say that it was uh, as the treasurer, I looked into that, it was all deposited. That's they received they received the receipt right. for the payment, which would require yeah. why was it why why did he why did he tell them that they had to be in cash? That's okay. not correct. That is correct. Okay. It's not so so it's for the moment. We're gonna agree to disagree. No, that's the truth. I mean well, the truth wins that. Okay, well you got the work done, we deposited all your money, yes. you got deposited in the checking account. But because of this, because he saw that receipt when they were talking. And no later, because he saw that receipt, Adam said they will never do any more work for us. I didn't say I would never do yes, work. Yes, you did. I said I was uncomfortable doing work no, because no, I was no. offered cash in advance. In the car I wrote the receipt. I'm going to ask the table this discussion. Yeah, but it's and not we can talk about it later. Right. But it's, it's inappropriate right now. Well, I didn't bring it up. Anything else, Mike? Well, yeah, Debbie, so. No, we're done with that topic. We're done with the cash issue for this this meeting. Why? Yeah, I, I have a question for the treasurer. She said okay. she looked. Ask your question. She said she looked into the finances mm -hmm. and, the, and the cash was deposited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have contacted the state police. I want to know what trucking company delivered the riprap to the railing job in May. Uh, was, it Naylor, was it Naylor? Was it Naylor or Young? I'm we not have sure. to look. We have to look at it. Okay, I'll need to know that. I mean, did, did, the, did the work get completed? Great. Work was I would, the, I work, would also, the work was completed and great. <laughs> I would also add that you were the treasurer at the time that this all took. I had no idea we were taking large amounts of cash for riprap jobs, forcing freeholders to go to the bank 
and get cash and then come back. Okay. back. That's not true. Sure. They doubled the amount of riprap that we were going to do. They already had cash on hand. I we see the full amount and then you wrote okay. a check for the second half. Mm -hmm. if, if, I, if I need to adjourn this meeting right now, I will. Otherwise, let's, be, let's move on and take this discussion off the mic. Okay? I got my answer. I'm not sure you did. You may have heard what you wanted to hear. Anyway, you said we're going to agree to disagree. <laughs> okay. We have a motion. It's been moved and seconded by Mary Jane and Steve Free. Right. It's been moved and seconded by Mary Jane and Steve Free to approve the allowance of vouchers. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, I'd like to go over the second read of the budget that we talked about extensively for several months now. Um, I'm going to cover the general fund revenues first, and um, I'll do some highlights, but really just focus on some changes. After the last meeting, as one of the freeholders brought up, someone had brought up the issue because we only have $779,000 worth of the dredging contract in um, the budget instead of the $879,000. It's like, how can we close the gap? One possibility would have been to assess a special benefits tax on all the freeholders. Um, the budget committee did not feel like that was appropriate at all. I mean, it's not 71%. It's a huge increase. We need to try to figure out another way. So the one big thing that you will see about this budget, the only <coughs> one addition that we made is that um, we are recommending that we take $40,000 out of the community foundation. That's money that's sitting in the Blake Enhancement Fund to go ahead and help close as much of the gap as we can. But we're gonna have to just kind of trail through and see exactly what the earthworks cost us, if we can save money on that. And we will then ask for uh, changes to the budget if appropriate if we can increase it um, in the future. So right now we're recommending, again, just the 7.5% increase in the property taxes. We have looked heavily at the permits and the fees and have increased uh, those as well. We increased the park admission. I'm a little nervous about it, but um, you know, just because in 2020 we got $80,000 right now, you know, we're tracking a little bit further behind than where we were last year, but we're going to have to just keep an eye on that. But we basically budgeted what we had How in 2020. How much is it now for the admission? Uh, we're and right now it's seven dollars. We're uh, nine dollars. Nine dollars. Oh, it's going up. Yeah. Sorry, nine. It's, it's nine. nine this year. Oh, it is nine. Yeah, it's correct. So on the income side, ah, get back to that here. Um, on general fund wages, total wages are up 3.8% to 246,986. Uh, total supplies are actually up only $550 to $73,650. Um, general fund services and charges uh, actually are going down from $297,810 to $244,060. Um, part of that is we're removing the dam and spillway inspection that we won't have. We're not going to budget for any cumulative maintenance funds since we basically need to go use most of the cumulative maintenance fund to try to close this gap on the budget. So overall, that is down $50,000. And on the capital side, we've just budgeted $779,000 in 2022. Um, again, $100,000 short of what the total contract would be to remove the full amount of sediment that they could get out of the lake. So with the addition of the $40,000 from the Community Foundation funds, it takes our anticipated um, a net deficit to uh, 654170 and again, that's with that capital expenditure and we have the $988,000 right now in the account. We will have that plus the reports project in there at that time. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. I mean, I'm not uh, knowledgeable as you can count, but when I look at these numbers, 
numbers, there's certainly a lot of numbers coming out. And I thought that we just said we were $100,000 short of the dredging, the high hydraulic dredging cost. We have only budgeted, no. That would be, we, we budgeted $100,000 less. We're still short. We were short like $324,000 when we pull money out of the CDs. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're, Oh, and, and we're still short. How much? How much? And can we use that money in that fund you created to be? I mean, is there any restriction on that? It should be because we worded that when we first set those funds up, we worded them for as broadly as okay. possible. So if we just take the if we take the money we already anticipated, mm -hmm. you know, pulling out the CDs of $114,000, we're short $209,000 at that point. Okay, and now we're going to pull $40,000 out, so that gets us down to like $160,000, $150,000, something like that. And then we've anticipated within our next year's budget, if all the numbers come through and with the increased fees, maybe thousand or so that we will generate in that income, you know, and then plus we might have um, additional funds where the earthquake project won't cost as much money. And you said you did not want to, you decided we should not uh, assess through the special assessment because it would be uh, not well received, that's for sure. And that's <laughs> the 71% of, of the assessment. But what do you do, and my understanding is we cannot cover the cost of the hydraulic dredging. We're going to have to cut back on the amount of dredging that's done. And, <coughs> mm -hmm. and I'm saying, have you considered the fact that we have a lease, we have like six months to get this done, and then we're done, so we can't do that dredging until we come up with a lot more money down the road. So why not maximize the amount of dredging that could be done while we have the equipment here and we have the lease and what lease are you talking about? Well, the You're lease on the equipment. I thought that when the people were doing the dredging, we at least uh, well, call the contract which is a contract. Yeah. Yeah. contract. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna try to point out that if we did the special assessment tax, it would be one time and that we could maximize our utilization of the hydraulic dredging because we only have it for a very small period of time, six, eight months. Yeah, so why why not maximize that with a special assessment tax to cover eighty thousand dollars? To me it sounds like that would be the way to go and not not complete the amount of trading that we can do when we have the equipment. Well the input that I received from some of my free holders is that they would not be that. Well, no one's going to be in favor of the tax. No one's going to be in favor. And it's hitting some these people all at once. You know, okay, here you go. Here's your tax assessment. Here's your bill right now. 71% increase. For me, our conservancy <coughs> taxes are like $1,900 right now. And I'm just saying what I personally know about my own tax situation. Um, that's the conservancy part. So that'd be, you know, roughly an additional, you know, well over $1,000. I'm just saying. It's a big thing. I mean, the Earthworks project came in a lot more than what we anticipated. No, I, I understand all that. I'm just saying, if you have this one-time opportunity, so you make a more of an assessment, and I'm sorry, but if you want to say every, every freeholder's in on this together, we're all going to benefit from the additional dredging, because you don't know when we'll be able to do it again, correct? I mean, there's no money for that, so we do it this one time, you have no money to do it again. Ever. What if we don't end up really needing all that money because we've been here, because the earthworks comes in less and we're able to generate you know the money that we think that we are from the additional fees and mm -hmm. things of that nature? Okay. Then what are we going to do with it? With the additional funds? Mm -hmm. Well, we put back into the foundation. I'd like to hear what, what the rest of the board thinks about this. Well, um, quick question, and I'll try to recall from the minutes from last time, there was also Seven and a half percent increase. That's what's in there now. Okay, that's, so that's, that's, that's in there. And, and that accounts for how much again that we expect to get from that? Because 
30,000 and change. 30? I can give that to you, but go ahead. I mean, that's what's already in the budget. We're oh, still in the deficit position. Well, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just kind of wondering. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, taxes, you know, it's like, that goes over like a part of church, you know. <laughs> 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 I would never be in favor of increasing my taxes for anyone else, but when you weigh the consequences. You know, yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but you know, also, I mean, some of us, I think, are going to get a, a bigger hit too on uh, taxes due to the fire uh, thing. The fire well, protection. The fire protection area for, for some of us, and because, you know, they. They are now going to a full time 24 7 deal, and that's going to increase people's taxes. Like 20, well. 15 to 20 percent. You know, and, and so there's these outside forces to consider as well. I mean, I hear what you're saying. It'd be nice just to take care of it and be done with it. Well, grabbing the opportunities, maximizing our money spent. Because the thing's already here, and, and we could just say, okay, we're going to do 120,000 cubic yards and not 80,000. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. For me, it's no brand. I well, we have to make that decision today. Yeah. I know. That's why I brought it up. And I think that the three holders ought to have some say in it, too. I said, well, I would welcome some comments. Well, the, we can. the problem can. with that, I would just say this. Yes, get up and speak. Is that we won't have everybody. I'm going to get some help. We won't have everybody. You know, you originally suggested doing a survey or something. Okay, now. All right. Um, I'd like to make a suggestion, though. I think it's a little too late. I don't know if there will be any traction. Uh, what made the earthworks cost so much is the fact that if we extend the area, it needs to be compacted. And what we could have done or could do instead is use uh, geobags put um, actually dredge material into them, let that settle, that builds something you don't need to compact it, and then use the whole whole uh, area. So that would have cut the cost and done the project a very much different way. Does, does that make sense what I just said, at least? It makes sense, but didn't we talk about that at one point? It, yeah, they said it wasn't cost effective to use the geobags for well, the we, entire process. For the entire process. But then it was still building up the wall, which is yeah, it still takes right. about a year so it's so a year to drop. Right. So, so we cut that. So we make the job in two pieces. To be dredging one year to fill the geobags and dredging another year to fill in the, the pond in the And I'd like to uh, also talk about uh, that. Um, for three different strategic planning committee meetings, I asked about <clears throat> what the disposal site would look like and I was told that we would not prepare the disposal site until we hired the dredger, and that did not what happened. Uh, Ron Thrasher, Malcolm, and I went to Grand Lakes, Ohio. Many of you have heard this, but Steve, you probably haven't. And we spent one day in Grand Lakes, Ohio, watching three dredging operations, dewatering in a serpentine field, which would have been much more cost effective to do up here than what we've done. Uh, that was supposed to cost $160,000 with most of the work done in house. Now it's going to be $432,000. That's close to $600,000 that we're going to have on that upland site. Right. Malcolm had an idea that when we get the hydraulic dredger on the lake, that we do a contract for a lease purchase with this company. And he has it figured out, he's an engineer, and he has it figured out by the third year, and he's pretty close, $2 a cubic yard in the third year. And we've been shut down, we've been shut down uh, each time we brought this up. Where are we? Says, Hang on, I'm not finished. Okay. I have the four. Until I take it. You, you, you know, I'm the director, I have three minutes, and I'm gonna use two, not even two minutes of my three minutes. Okay. Okay. Then don't yell at us. I'm yeah. telling the paid staff not to interrupt me. I'm not yelling at you. <clears throat> Adam says it's going to take a four-man crew. We saw three operations on Grand Lakes. One man operating the machine. One man with one rudder in a John boat. Not a four-man crew. 
The operator was paid $35 an hour for two hours. The runner come back in, he relieved him, he was making $35 an hour. The runner then is making $15 an hour. The disposal sites were, were perfect. They were serpentine fields. They dewatered as they went through the field, and then they went through a gate, through a riprap field, and then back into the lake. Completely different than what we witnessed on July 28th of this year. So, he's got a great idea, but we've been shut down. And he's part of the, the committee that meets with the manager on this. But we've been shut down. I'm glad you brought this up, because you're not aware of this. And it needs to be, the, the public needs to be aware. That's all I have. Mr. Chair, I just want to add, I'm not really on either side here. I'm just try, I'm on the side of what works and what works from an engineering perspective. So, uh, let me. Okay, so <laughs> in, in the heart, you know, we had consultant and engineering. They looked at all this stuff. Right. Yeah, I mean the thing about it, if you had a so under the room, that is not true. If you have a the the site was designed by like Christopher Brick Engineer. Yeah, if you have if you have lots of room, these serpentine sites work well. But when you're constricted to a little area, the thing about volume is the more stuff you have in there, the less volume you have for sediment. So when you go with one large basin, you don't have these extra ridges. You can increase the volume that you put in there. You can't be water. You can be water, and that's why we have volume. I mean, if you, if you have area, you can use the serpentine. And then we're looking at purchasing the equipment. This site's going to be filled up in one year, and it's going to take a handful of years to clear that out. What do we do with that equipment for those other three to five years when we're getting rid of that sediment? That equipment just sits there. Do we have other sites? Do we have a possum truck for some of it? Gosh. Then we lose the sites. We've had this, these conversations yeah. multiple times. Oh, well, we don't okay. have. We do not have unlimited places to put the sediment. From the very beginning of this project, everyone, we, every consultant we always have talked to said, the thing that will kill you is not the money, it's not the equipment, it's where are you gonna put your dirt? And we have very limited places for we can put the sediment. So we have, I'm sorry, Steve, I'll, I'll let you speak in a minute, but we have gone through a process. What Mike is talking about is stuff that we, we talked about three and four years ago. That we, after as we've gone through the process, we've learned from the consultants that we've engaged. We have learned from um, the, the people who have volunteered to work on the project, um, and we have come to this solution for this first hydraulic dredging project, and I, it is the first. So we'll, figure, we'll have to figure out after we do the first project how we will raise more money to do ensuing projects, because we know the sediment's gonna keep coming. But I think, and I, I'm sorry Malcolm, but I do think we're a little late yeah. to be having that discussion now. Kevin? So, um, I think Steve's point makes a lot of sense that we're gonna, you know, be right at the end and we need to close this gap. I don't think a special assessment's the appropriate way to do it, but I do believe, uh, and I'll just talk personally, if somebody came to me near the end of that project and said, hey, we're 50K short, you wanna pitch in and donate here to get us over the over the finish line because we've got a, a bathtub that's 75 percent full we've got the equipment on the on the on the i would write a check and not for the 50 though. not for 50 <laughs> well, but i would well, write, 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 <laughs> write a sizable check to help us move to that and i think there are people on this way I would do the same. that would contribute to that and so Steve, I think you're right. We can't let this opportunity go away, but I think there's another way to do it, and it's not necessarily in the budget today. It's a year from now when everybody's beginning to see the dirt leaving that East Bay starting to be usable for boating and all that other sort of stuff, and there's going to be some momentum around this that says, hey, this is, this is a good deal. Let's not lose the opportunity. And so that's my 10 cents. And we also know 
There's a lot of variables in his quotes. Right. And so we don't know to the tenth of the dollar what that earthworks contract's going to come into. We don't even know whether the, the dredging contract's going to hit exactly where it is because they've got provisions for surfactant and a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So I think the smart thing to do is pass the budget kind of the way it is and know we have a bogey for the end of the year and look at the freeholders that kind of fill that gap but it's not really through taxes. I think it's through donations. Ron? I'm a little confused on the, the dump site and the, the short money. We have to have engineers, I, I can, we're told we have to have engineers for Todd's possible dump site. We have to have engineers for a sediment trap on an awesome truck. If we wasted $120,000 and now it's going to be, what was the number that started out? 132. What was the 120 waste? I, we paid our people to do it. All fall last year. We, so, we paid somebody to do what's there, but now it's got to be redone. No, my, question is, 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 my, my question is, is what went wrong? Why did we waste a year and <clears throat> that amount of money? I mean, we're talking for short 80000 I think that's what you just came up with. What went wrong and where did it go wrong? Well, the numbers, numbers came back, back, when we fit it out, the numbers came back higher than we anticipated. For this exactly. You know, no, we started so dredging, we were dredging in the fall. I don't know where this $100,000 number came from. That's like an entire year's worth of salary plus for the dredging operation. It's like I heard last month the number got thrown out that it cost $8,000 to dig out Dorothy Lane and everything, including repairs, maintenance, everything was <laughs> at like $30,000. I'm not sure where these huge numbers okay, are. Okay. So we started digging to remove some of the dessert. We can't the, the, dessert, the dirt. We can't do the compaction in house because we don't have the equipment. So we'd have to we'd have to remove or get more equipment. And we don't have that expertise. So we started digging dirt to save a little bit of money. We were there for a couple months in the fall. I don't think we got over there until October or so. But was it a design by an engineer? Yes. To begin with. Yes. Yeah. But it didn't work. Yes. It didn't work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't care. I do understand what has gone on before. I do understand the hydraulic strategy and so I do understand all the stuff in the past, but we we don't care about what's happened in the past. We have to figure out how to maximize our investment going from this day forward. I agree. And so forget all that about the past. You can't change it. And there might have been some mistakes made, or there might have been great decisions. But I am still saying we need to maximize our contract to get the most hydraulic credit we can at this time. Well, and I would certainly see. I, I, I don't disagree with that in principle. And if there is a solution, as Kevin has suggested there might be, that we could raise that money separately outside of our budget, that would be terrific. And I would personally help solicit people for that purpose. And one more question, and that is, can we actually do that? Can we say we only have enough money and we only do 80,000 cubic yards, 80,000 cubic yards? So right now there's 100,000 in the budget. Okay, it's 100,000. Yeah. But we can do, we can hold 120, right? Specifically when we have That's what we're going to try to see if we had, when we explained that and we approved the contract in a board meeting, we had had the attorneys take a look at that so we can shut the valve off. Okay. You know, All right. Well, we, don't have the money. we don't have the money, but at this point in time, if we do have the money, the design is to hold up to that 120. Then we can't accommodate, there's no limitation. We can go to 120,000. So we need to come up with some money to cover that 20,000, or we just don't do it, which I think is a missed opportunity. Well, I don't disagree with anyone on that. Gail? Five million dollar houses have just gone in next to me. I am a poor person that happened to come here early, and I own several houses at the lake. I am taxed out. Those million dollar houses, especially the one that just sold for 1.2 million next to my cottage, they are going to add more because of their taxes to begin with. And I think $100,000, those five millionaires, they get, they do it through the foundation, the foundation. <laughs> they do it through the foundation, they get a tax write-off. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I also think that we have an amazing space here that we could have some kind of festivals. There's been festivals in the past held here. 
Yeah. So I think that money will come then, and I think taxing any more is going to kill me and a lot of people. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, I'm not going to talk. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. Do, do many of the board members have anything else on the budget as it stands right now? Because okay. this is it. This is the way the budget's going in. We can't change it. We've already... At our next meeting, it will be the public hearing on the 2022 budget. And that has to be an in-person meeting. The governor or yeah. the DLGF is yeah. clear about that. We have to do that in person. So will you... So will a deficit budget be presented? We've always presented, quote, a deficit budget because of the capital expenditures are treated kind of funny. It's like cash in and cash out. But we have gone through this with the DLGF already, and it's not deficit in their eyes. Yeah, so they look at our, our expenses, our revenues, <laughs> and the debate. So if this budget goes to the T with our, our projected income and expenses, we end the end of next year with a little over $400,000 in our, our accounts for sort of cash on hand. So they'll approve anything up until we're going into the, the naked notes. Um, so that is what's being presented and has already been not approved by the DLG, but. Mm -hmm. For the board members, I guess there was one other small change. Instead of saying we were going to spend 50000 out of that cumulative improvement fund, we're only spending 49000 And that's kind of just because of the way the cash works out and what we anticipate maybe, you know, assessed values will be and what our tax take will be. So. Anyway, that was one of the small change, but um, okay. That was anything else on the budget, Debbie? I don't think so. Okay. Manager's report. All right. Let me look at some of the stuff that we went on um, last time, just like for this continuing topic. Um, again, that at Dorothy Lane, I picked up all the all the costs, staff. Repairs, maintenance, everything for that entire time frame that was up there. Um, the cost was right at thirty-three thousand dollars. So I heard there's like eighty thousand dollars mark being thrown out there, and that is not correct. Um, they also talked about maintenance of weirs in uh, different areas. Um, we are not allowed to go put check dams and obstructions in creek pathways <coughs> without permitting through DNR and uh, IDEM. Um, so we can't really go maintain that as, as the government. And I've asked before to see the permits for those when you've mentioned to us about helping to maintain that. And while we're open to it, I've never received these permits from IDEM or um, DNR for putting check names in a regulated stream. I mean, our names are super tied when we're working our disposal site because of streams right there. You're not a stream. They're called a tributary or a ditch. You can look it up. It's yeah, I, 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 so I would need something that said you did need a permit. I mean, because through our school, through the ER, through the uh, that doesn't flow through your army. army Corps. Let me know when you want me to answer. All right, well, cool. through DNR, the Army Corps of Engineers, it's a tributary or a ditch. You do not need permitting. You need to notify the Brown County uh, Sanitary or Wastewater people. We did that. We got the okay. We put them in. Could you send me that okay, and then we can look at potentially helping with that? Uh, yeah, that was in 2012. Let me look. Bob right. right. Madden should have had it. I, he, we've never had anything from Bob, and I think this was discussed before. But I, I don't have anything on my record now. Uh, so we can talk more about it, pass on that. So I think what we're talking about, you talk about assisting us in digging them out. Well, I said as of now, I don't think we even can do that. Well, I think the board all they're, they're on private right. property. Right. It's a, Private, there's still a degree of connectivity. I mean, our disposal site is essentially private property. We're not asking it's connected to the lake. Oh, wait, well, I'm, just, I'm going to move on from that. But wait, I, no, I want you to hang on. I want to make sure that, that, that this is clear. We don't want you to dig them out. All I did last month was ask for assistance and money. We have the homeowner, the, the landowners digging, will dig them out. They maintain them. Uh, so we're not asking. The conservancy to dig them out. We asked the conservancy to assist us. We have an account set up, a uh, Solomon Harbor account set up. We asked for assistance uh, for that because the two floods nearly you know, bank bankrupted the, the, uh, the HOA 
installment. That's I would, I would just like to, to see the, the approval. Since you work at the meeting, yeah. let me say that let me say that um, Mike, what you asked for was would we approve and aid you guys in spending twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars to do whatever you needed to do with those weirs. And I asked how many freeholders is it, and you said it's ninety six. It's like 30 bucks a freeholder. We cannot keep helping people with their private areas. This is why we don't have the resources. No other way does that kind of thing. So the, the board basically, and that's at which point that you said that we spent $80,000 on six freeholders at Dorothy Lane, which we just did, which not. We did not. So I'm just saying the, the board wasn't but agreeable to that, so you don't need the offer. So I mean, I just, I've never even seen any uh, authorization for these, and they are regulated. So I just would like to see that. Um, another thing that was brought up: uh, increased boat parking. We actually had that in our master plan. This cove over here to put a gangway style docking system um, in the plan, and ultimately, I think that'd be a really good idea to separate it from the beach. Um, so I think we need to keep with the plan on that. And as we raise the money in this cumulative improvement fund, we can look at doing improvements like that. But that that is in our plan, right? What would be the timeline on that? My granddaughter is four, my grandson is one. I mean, can we get that done next year? Could you drive down here? We don't have we don't have drive. I mean there's no parking there. We can set about six boats, but it's we we need money for it all comes back to the money. So it, and and setting priorities for how we're this is our big priority, the the seven project. And we are working on the subleases. Um, this fall, we'll get some more information and trying to figure out exactly how many subleases are from other districts that are in different districts and locations. Uh, so we we'll work on that information this fall. I'll come back to this once we get a little bit out of the season for there. Um, and then I just wanted to bring up that we do have the September 21st mediation uh, about the overflow pond usage. Um, so that'll be coming up next month. So moving on, we have um, our barge operations update. So far we've removed 8,308 yards. Um, we're almost complete with Les's area right there. We're probably just a couple barges away from being all the way to the culvert there on the South Shore by Richardson Road. Mm -hmm. And now we complete the LLCD priorities for this year. Um, we still have private work coming in, so that, that's pretty good. Our vegetation control will be spraying on August 30th for the lotus and emergent vegetation. So we'll be out there on August 30th. Again, that's a two-part spray. We spray initially, um, and they come back in about two weeks and do the second kill on that. Um, it's looking like we're not going to have to spray as much of the It held pretty well from last year, and we generally do get a multi-year kill uh, from the chemicals that we use. But we'll be coming out to spray when we need to on August 30th. The sediment management project, the earthworkers will begin this month with that. The earthworks, the plan is to be done with November. Um, so we should have a clip moving over there pretty soon. Um, this, will be, this will be very nice. We can get, get rid of the ice for us there now and uh, get the, the experts out there to accomplish this. And they said probably by November they should be done. Um, so that'll be nice to actually have that on the ground. We have started our audit for 2019 and 2020. Uh, we're currently giving them the materials right now for the audit. I think their deadline for the finishing is December 30th. I don't expect it to take that long. Is it December 1? So December is their deadline. It usually doesn't take that long. Um, I really don't foresee any issues with that. It's a pretty standard audit. We have audits every two years for the government. Um, we've never really had any major issues at all. And then finally, I have a 2021 drawdown discussion. Um, I've been receiving actually a lot of Quest for drawdowns this year for maintenance around docks, shorelines, and I'm not necessarily against a, a small drawdown because it would allow us to look at any current stumps, major woody debris, that kind of thing in that eastern field. So if we only did a, a two to three foot drawdown, we can get up there with the boat, we can look for stumps that we need to remove with our equipment in the springtime or yet this fall. Um, so I would, I would be in favor of doing a two to three foot drop. I really think two feet would get where most people can do some work and then it would allow us to see what type of stumps and everything are still in the east end. So we generally start after Thanksgiving for the drawdown. So the, in, you know, previously we kind of decided that was not good for sedimentation, that, that it exposes 
mud flats, and then when it rains, it gets uh, really cold. It, it does, and um, what we've said before is that we'd look at doing every handful of years just for maintenance needs, yeah. and I don't think we've done one since 2015. Well, the last time we did a drawdown was for the railroad. Yep. So 2017 for the railroad. Yep. Kevin? What's the typical drawdown versus the two foot you're pro proposing? Usually they propose like a, two, a four foot, like a so half of what they normally would do in two. Yeah, so it sounds good as a two just with the railroad trussel. I think generally it's about a four foot. Um, I think two should be able to get rid of that though. I'd have to get uh, with uh, my people uh, at a free meeting, I guess, and try to get their, their thoughts on it. I do have the largest district in the on the lake, so. I can't really answer for uh, 96 people. I'm glad you remembered that, Debbie. Numbers, oh, numbers are for business. Yes. You know, I was just curious. You're talking about the drawdown, and I think gosh, the water is down so much already. Isn't it enough to do the fixing that needs to be done? What we have no. We're down. Yeah, we're down. Water. Water. Yeah, we're down. Yeah, we would only do two feet below normal pool. Correct, yeah. So we got additional foot. We wouldn't take an extra two feet. No, and right now we're at half a foot below 0. 0.7. Yeah. yeah, so we would, Rebecca, we would not, we would take that two feet from the, what normal pool is. So if we're already a half a foot down, we won't, we would just do it a foot and a half. Right. And really the goal would just be to get a visual to see if any stops are sticking up. In that area that we're trusting. Mean, that's why I was thinking this is the water low enough now to so see what It's pretty down. close, we can't get boats there. If we, if we were down about another probably 12 inches, we'd probably be able to see most of that area. Right? Oh, so we need to do that. that yeah, that's that's true. Well, so we don't, want to, we don't need to decide this in this meeting. No, no we don't need to. And we generally don't do it until after Thanksgiving once we remove the, the public okay. courtesy dollar. I think one of the freeholders mentioned earlier that hit the stumps and we hit it with our boat. You can't see them. There's such little visibility. You know, it seems like it would be helpful. We, we you know, we need to get that in. <laughs> you guys okay. need to make that decision, though, because people got to get docks. I mean, boat lifts. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we have to do. Prepare for dock repair and see what we're You need so to make that decision. To decide today. You need to let people know. Don't oh, wait until. Well, well, we will. But we, we wouldn't do this drag out before November. Correct. Okay. Next month, this will give Mike a chance to talk to his people. We can get some other information. We can make the decision in September and communicate it then. Would that be enough time? I, the last time we ran into this, people couldn't get boat lifts out. I mean, if you're going to do repairs on sea walls and things, you, you've got to schedule that, to get the material. We all know we can't get material on that. How many, how many dot removing companies do we have on the way? Well, let's like three or four. I think we ran into that problem before. Yeah, we have um. Yeah, there's like three: the Thomas Docks, the New Docks, a handful of them. Mm -hmm. you have a yeah. How long do you leave it down? So if you, well, we've done historically in the past, and we're trying to maintain it to ideally dry out the sediment, which never happened. Um, so this time we would just draw it down enough to where you get a visual on it and then let it fill back in. And so not a pretty short amount of time. Two weeks? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Or unless we have a December flood. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had that yeah. before. And if we're below the spillway, one inch rain will fill up the lake about three feet. So I mean it's a it's a to fill it. So that it would be a foot old. Anything else on that? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'll have. Second, we're going to talk about an action items list. He did. He did. He did. Um, I still have things left on my action items list from last month. How, how many? Uh, I don't know, three or four maybe. Okay. Uh, uh, a prevention system at Possum Trot. I think this is the fifth time that we've been in there. Debbie, you just brought up that you know we're now on our own right. to take care of our own places, <coughs> and we've been in this area five times. That I've been coming to meetings since 2006 with Vince and Ron. And, uh, I don't know where Scott went, but uh, so we need we 
need to hire an engineer to permit a prevention system to take that water and divert it into the field in front of our disposal site. Uh, I've brought this up many, many times and I, I don't know where it ends up. Um, so so to, to that item, we actually did look at using that for a disposal site before we purchased the South Shore property. And the city of Bloomington Utilities and Brown County Water said we would not be allowed to use that field because they have water lines running through there and they're not positive where they are. I'm talking about the wheat, the wheat field, the, the wheat field. So oh, that, inside the lake? Yes, inside the lake. All right, that's the field. Okay. Yes. KCI did this in Grand Lakes. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what brought me to KCI. How did you do this? We totally could have divert. Um, I, I still would like to know how a patrol boat sinks on a lift. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know. Did we get a report? Did you write a report to the board? Jesus. And I didn't get it. <laughs> no, what <laughs> we're looking for. Um, we just did it. I came in after the flood. We walked down there and I was checking out all the equipment and it looked like a little rider. There's about three inches of free board sticking out of it. Um, there was already a hole in the lower unit, which we were looking to get replaced. And uh, by the time you look at the cost of that and maintenance, it just it's not worth it for that little bit. I think it's been on its last legs for a while. Um, I think it was about time that we got a new vehicle for the control. So uh, it was the uh, it was on the lift, but the water came up so high it and then it yeah, up. I I think water got I don't know wind blew the canopy off a little bit, but it was it would spool up to the dash. It was a motor in there. Our house. Well, I'm, I'm not sure how it happened, but it, it happened. So my last well uh, uh, can we get a sign at Ellis Point to tell people to slow down before they make that turn? Because the, the sign that you have now, which is a good sign, wait, don't wait beyond this point. We need a sign at Ellis Point because people are coming around there. We're going to have a boating accident. Uh, they're coming around too fast. It's actually both areas. Yeah. Oh, that's a sign. We can put one right on the corner right there. We have another one of those signs. Yeah, can already you up down there. Would, please? Yes. Yeah, I'll return right. turn. Um, when you were pumping, when you were draining the upland site, um, I have pictures for the board, but you were pumping the mud, the muck, the sediment, the silt, all of that that was in the pond at the upland site into our harbor. And there was no filter, uh, you sunk the pump, you didn't float the pump, and all that debris came into our harbor. I called the office, Pam said, call the office. And I directed Alex to shut off the pump. And so, Alex, did you shut off the pump? Yes. You shut off the pump at 1 o'clock in the afternoon when I told you to? I don't know if it was exactly 1 o'clock. So you, you drove down there, yep. you told Adam I called, you shut off the pump? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Um, I have a word. I don't know if you want to do new business or not. Okay. We're at new business, so it could be. I just wanted to kind of, I wanted to follow up on that tax increase, just so you guys, I, I had done a schedule of, you know, what our tax increases look like over the last several years. And when I first came on the board, we had not increased our conservancy tax at all for several years from since 2000. Well, track, yeah. So in 2019, we increased them 26.8%, you know, the money that we ended up getting. In 2020, we didn't have an increase, but last year, in 2021, because we did approve that new cumulative improvement fund, you know, everyone saw a 6.3% increase, you know, just in their, their uh, LLCD tax, but with that new cumulative improvement fund that we took in of $45,000, dollars taxes went up 20.5%. That was how much our tax intake went up last year because of that new one. So I just wanted to make that clear. I mean, right now with the human of maintenance and this, it's going to be 7.9%. Um, so okay. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, that was only a three cent increase for $100. Right, but it, it, it I mean, took our overall I, I know rate up. But I think when you say the that seven or eight or a nine percent, it was not, that was not the, that's not the. Our, our overall in 2021, um, we're, Slated to get three hundred eighty-two 
$2,000 and in 2020 we got 317,000 total. I'm just going on the numbers. The cumulative okay. tax was three cents right. per $100. I want to make that clear. There was an additional $50,000 that we got in. So yeah, okay. I'm just saying overall money in, money out. I just want to make that clear. So thank you for your comments and I support my increasing. The, uh, okay. the last tax increase I think was in 2019. Yes, that? Okay. she said that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Okay, this concludes the August meeting. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Um, uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, September 23rd uh, for a board meeting and a public hearing on the budget uh, for 2022. We are hoping that we will be back at the City of Bloomington Utilities, um, barring whatever the mandates end up being. This meeting will be in person somewhere because it is the hearing and it has to be in person. So um, stay tuned in case we can't go to CBU because they're not open, we'll find another location. Um, I need a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thanks for coming. Motion carried.